right guys it's time to do this project I've been putting it away this is uh, the E46 that I'm gonna be actually servicing I already took the manifold my goal is to pull the engine out and actually rebuild it completely from scratch and then see maybe we can add a turbo over there I hope I can film it as professional as I can because a lot of angry comments usually come over saying you don't show this you don't show that I mean there is a lot of information already available this is a <clears throat> entertaining content mainly uh, the car itself is sitting on 335 wheels it's not 346 wheels it's larger uh, it has a good chassis and that's why I like and that's my point uh, this is what uh, draws me back somebody says trash it I mean the car itself does not worth much at all at this point so why not to make it a project car it will take a while maybe a whole year for me to finish but it's important that <clears throat> I stay consistent and work on it every so often obviously obviously I don't have all the time in the world I work most of my time you know I kind of uh, spent 90% uh, of time during the week at work and now maybe time to reanimate this one so oh, these are the jacks I took somewhere they were free so I'm gonna use it very important love this car like how it handles uh, I just like it so let's see so today I will try to perhaps because I don't have the engine lift yet my goal is to at least to at least uh, do something that I can so I'm gonna be disassembling it mainly I see what I can pull off I may be able to pull off the engine head but we'll see maybe not uh, so obviously I will remove the oil housing thermostat uh, this EGR valve this bracket uh, cover gasket maybe I will remove radiator today as well we'll see what I do this mess with uh, this wiring has to come off as well uh, like I said I'll try to show as much as I can while I work and uh, we just sit and watch so right now I'll be removing the housing because it's extra I'll loosen the bolts this power steering pump I can just drop and just do it this way it just comes off as this A lot of people ask why you have so much string in your arms actually the grip itself because I do this a lot this takes a lot of finger strength once it's uh, loosened you can just obviously I'm not gonna show too much of this once I remove this there will be a lot of oil even though oil was drained but I suspect actually no oil huh I actually had to change because I was wearing pants and it was impossible to work my ass was getting toasted so much needed extra ventilation so the next part I will do I will remove this and these heating heater hoses uh, these are brand new I just put them in last year 
I guess o-rings in them will later need to be replaced as well and while we're here I see some cracking in there and look at this all these wires lost lost the insulation and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about it I guess that's a problem to worry later so we'll just do what we do okay so I already loosened this I'm just gonna be pulling them anything I can unscrew while I'm here this is 14 millimeter And while I'm here, I found a long time lost piece. <laughs> Isn't that funny? How you find things later, years later. Just so anyone knows, this heater set. Of course, you want to use OEM because you don't want to get to this point if you want to replace them because it breaks since it's aftermarket. You gotta use OEM and it costs $200. So when you extract this, you have to be extremely, extremely careful. This is plastic. It will last for many years if you buy OEM. BMW OEM. Who wanna play mechanic? It's still here. Well, it started coming out. As you can see, I already broke a little top over there, but it's okay, we'll get them out. And this piece is on the way, because I'm trying to remove this stupid, stupid wire. And this is a cam sensor. In order to get it, this one, need to remove that. But the cam sensor is also new. There's a lot of new things in this engine. Pretty much everything around it is new. So I'm trying to be careful to reuse everything I can. And don't lose any bolts or nuts. So now, with this shit out of the way, I can finally start removing these things. Because they are very fragile and this one does not come off easily okay so the last time I was removing this when I replaced the old ones old ones broke me trying to remove them I guess BMW makes them so that you can't get them out I think a miracle will happen if I do get them out okay the lower one came out and as I was suspecting These gaskets, damn, don't focus, bitch. Doesn't want to focus. Here we go. These gaskets, they may be one time use. Not sure which kind it is. So, the way I'm getting them out is putting a screwdriver like this and basically prying them out because that's the only way. But you have to be careful and from both sides, not just from one. From one side, push, then from another, and then pull. And you know, what's funny is that the most time you usually waste it is exactly on things like this. It's not nuts and bolts. It's mainly stupid, stupid parts like this, really. Had to get some tea, hot tea. Yes, I drink hot tea, a lot of hot tea. And that's the best cup I ever had. Even better than the, those that have a heating element. No, it's not a commercial, it's just my honest opinion. All right, so let's do this. Um, what are we gonna remove next? I may go for thermostat. 
Yes, I'll go for thermostat and the water pump next. Loosen those bolts and we'll continue. And <clears throat> thermostat is also brand new here in my case. It's OEM. $200. So again, after I remove it, the gasket won't be good anymore. There's nothing you could do except get a new gasket which isn't aftermarket or it's gonna leak forever or if, even if it won't it will leak very soon maybe in, uh, in about a week or a month so it's kind of very sad that this happened because everything around the engine is it's essentially brand new and the car ride miles and miles For some reason they made two bolts 10 10 and 13 here why can't they make all of them 10 or all of them 13 and there is one on the bottom somewhere if i can see yeah, here we go it's right under there now there is a 10 I thought it was uh, another 13, yes, yeah, so there is only one 13. Okay, let's see. The last one is coming off. Now, here we go. But if you can tell, there is this bracket that goes around and holds it in place. So we need to loosen it as well, right here. But this one isn't 10. This one is 11, which is the most uncommonly used one. All we have to do is loosen it. But we have to take it off anyways, because we are taking off everything. So, as well, just remove it completely. Don't lose this one, it's 11, you won't find it anymore. So kind of like this for now and this. Back in a pile of shit. Now we can remove the thermostat. Here we go. Oh the gasket is still there. What a surprise. And that's the di that's the difference between OEM and aftermarket shit. Is that after all this time the gasket actually is still good. I can almost be certain you can reinstall it actually and it won't leak meanwhile all this dura last and blah blah shit if you remove it like this gasket will be gasket will be flat and actually it will leak within about six months from your installation now a lot of issues with this car is this car's got bad reputation and thanks to you kids that buy bmw and think hey let me, let me install aftermarket parts. You guys install aftermarket expansion tanks, radiators, hoses, and all of the shit around it. And it's always leaking and you always think that BMW is not reliable. This engine has 250,000 miles on it. 250,000. I don't know which car can take this many miles. Maybe Honda, four-cylinder. Not a six cylinder. Um, this is pretty, pretty good. Uh, despite all the shit you talk about it. Okay, now let's remove this. What am I doing? And see, I'm trying to film and trying to work at the same time. It's not easy. Don't blame me. This bolt's usually hard to remove. But in my case, it's easy because I changed everything before. The water pump is also new. All of this can be reused later. But again, water pump has a gasket, round O-ring that is probably one-time use as well. All of that will need to be reordered. See. Okay, so now this is 10, 
another ten. All right, so now we can remove it. Ah, there's still shit in there. Can you believe? All right, so that's the whole ring I'm talking about. That whole ring is prone to leaking. Very much so. But the unit itself is good. There's no nothing wrong to, to it. Slowly but surely I'm getting I'm removing everything that I can and it's all 10 millimeter for the most part. Nothing is tight. Uh, you can easily unscrew pretty much with fingers. And this thing is also hundred dollars. Actually one 120. Look at this. How beautiful there was water in it but that's the part number if you can read don't try to use aftermarket one trust me I learned it wrong way aftermarket one does not work or if it does it works for very little here we go stupid shit ecology so this is for emissions So now I'm pretty much removing a valve cover gasket and uh, valve cover itself. Everything is finger tight here. The specs are very low. It's all plastic. I think mine is cracked. Last time we used silicone, so whenever I reassemble it back, I'll need to buy a new plastic one. And I think that's a hundred, a hundred fifty, two hundred dollars. So if you count everything, it is retarded. Everything is retarded expensive. The size is 11 here. Don't lose this. Bolts or anything. These are unique. You won't find them. You don't even know what part it is. But if you look at them, they're very specific. See? It's a very weird one. There's this one and this kind. Running out of time. I've been here doing this for a little bit over one hour now. I think I removed all the bolts that hold it, the thing, the valve cover. Now I'll be prying it out and removing it comes out relatively easy and I told you mine is cracked so I will need to buy a new one because here somewhere basically one of those things inside is cracked from my stupidity once the gasket itself of course is garbage so basically it is garbage all right so what I'm gonna do now is very simple I'm gonna be unscrewing all these bolts right there uh, right there this one uh, of course taking that out and this out that sensor uh, then I'm gonna get to the vinyls I think this one is a regular thread and the other one is uh, against the clock actually clockwise the other one is so reversed basically or well, whatever you want to call it tensioner here course I'll be photographing everything I see here uh, mine has a cover here other engines some I've seen don't I don't know why this one has and some don't what makes the difference Elangite 
course. All right. You tell me if this engine looks clean as far as the top. If it's not too bad. We'll see. I actually had to remove the radiator because it was on my way working here and everything around it. This is power steering pump, brand new, brand spanking new, like not even a month old. Transmission, coolant. I don't know if I'm gonna go with manual for this or anything, or it's gonna keep it automatic, but that transmission is tired. It works, but despite my uh, oil changes and services, sometimes it uh, gets stuck between third and fourth so the car keeps revving to like almost 7k and transmission does not shift happens occasionally uh, but thinking of if you add extra power here it just won't hold i think if you agree on this let me know i think everyone agrees on that so if i do manual i don't know if uh, the radiator probably will be brand new too. You know, almost almost everything is a 10 millimeter one. Even those, I lied, they're not 11, they're 10. I think one was a 11. Not sure. But they're all 10. Here's more. Over there, there's one more guy, you see? I don't know why, but this corner always leaked. Like there, always. That corner, probably the gasket. These pieces are very important. Alright, we arrived to a very important point, is remove all of this. I'll show you what I mean. There are plugs like this. And in order to remove uh, this piece, you have to unscrew the bolts in there. As I understand. However, that one is deep. So I'll figure something right now. Okay, so it's getting dark. It's about eight o'clock. Uh, this is when sunset is. Need to wrap up. But uh, one of these things, which I figure has a gasket, therefore it's a, a O-ring. One time used thing and they are here. So one I got out, the other one I can't because this thing is on the way. I don't have time to remove this right now. So I'll try to break that one. Since they, they are one time use anyways, you should not reinstall these. They will leak. And this one I just extracted, but it's already cracked anyhow over there as you can see. Alright, so this is what I've done. And you will see in a second. So you can actually see this. <laughs> this is awesome. That's the only way you can get this out. One way, since they're still anyhow broken. We'll put it here anyways. In the worst case, if we can't find one of these for, for sale, we can just glue, super glue the hole in there. <laughs> That's it, not a big deal. Okay, I re removed the unit and uh, it's getting dark, so I'll wrap up for today, continue next day. 
we'll get where we want to be next thing will be removal of the exhaust it's a pain in the ass it is really pain in the ass whatever was removed already in the sink all these bolts simple green basically I'm just spraying and washing while I can like again this isn't uh, something I'm rushing to do it's basically whenever I have time so I'll be doing this I'll be cleaning everything this unit itself this is Vanos unit is $500 so I better make sure I spend um, its own time for it to make sure it's serviced properly and so forth uh, all the bolts is just uh, just don't like to mess around all this grease it's a lot of grease I've been washing it already for about five minutes and it still has a lot of a lot of grease so I'm boiling water right now to dissolve it it's a lot there's a lot to do okay so these are the parts I removed today <clears throat> besides the exhaust so all the gears are cleaned this is the secondary chain so clean as you can see it doesn't even make a mark on the towel everything is clean these are weird I think there are two of these the one fell out I don't even remember where it goes to I will check uh, these bolts are for this guy this is the secondary this chain tensioner so that part goes in and then this goes over I don't know if tensioners need to be replaced this is the main tensioner as you can see cleaned and there is just a hole it's just weird so the way I figure it goes is like this and in and uh, push it in so that that's literally what it's doing it's not doing anything else I need to probably replace it because these things can't last forever even though it's aluminum but let it dry like as is this so one of these gears is still on the car because it was too dark to remove it as you saw you see it kind of like so kind of cool kind of cool these little ones are from one of uh, from removal of these so as you can see one one two three 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 these go to one two three uh, looks like I got everything um, that's about it and this unit is still still getting washed still drying and then I will service disassemble completely so much gunk so much shit this, is, this was soaking for 24 hours and then I was washing it in the sink and then I will service every everything and that's the piston right there um, yep so I'm taking it slowly but surely I'm really tired now all right everyone <clears throat> here we are next day as you can see it's a completely different day so today I'm trying to remove the actual exhaust and maybe take the cams off and if we're lucky we, we will get the head off as well so I can clean it tomorrow's rain I'm not gonna be working um, after that we'll uh, disconnect the AC and other stuff by the weekend uh, today's Thursday so I'll get to work under the car as well I'm just doing what I can as of right now uh, whatever so <clears throat> let's get to work 
Okay, so these are lemons all around. It's going to be a pain in the ass to get them out. As you can see, they are pretty much rusted out. Um, what a challenge. Yep, so let's do it. To get some to some of the harder spots I got this sort of angle because if you look under fucking in there for example there's no way to get it out without having it. This is a good visual so you can see so I don't have to go under the car this time I hope. Uh, these are headers so it's not stuck stock is a lot harder to get removed hopefully I'll not spend more than 30 minutes on this it's a lot of knots to remove first I go for the most difficult ones so my strategy is to remove the bottom ones and the far ones first and then everything else is almost guaranteed I can remove so I have a first problem is that one and this, as you can see, the angle at which it bends is ridiculous. Plus, there is not enough wrench room. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add this, sort of speaking like, but from this end, and I'm gonna use the lever this way. What? You agree? Good job. So let's do that not finding easy ways that one is the hardest and it's the that one it's the very last bottom because of this intertwining there is no way to use even this or smaller than this so i have to do inch by inch hand by hand thousands of turns that little one my boss i already lost one of the keys one of the wrenches bottom so I'm gonna continue this I'm gonna remove that one and this is the most depressing one so far we got another beach bolt this way it's uh, that one right there see the last beach in a row it came out with the actual from the block from the engine block i don't care i may will replace all of them so the last that one's removed now one on the back is not removed so that one is another bitch i need to remove all right I got a good hand of this. This is enough room for me to stand. And I can work from that way and that way in. And it's easier. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more. All right, for most part, I fuck around here for most part today, removing the fucking exhaust. So now I can't remove it because the engine needs to be tilted. But it doesn't matter if I'm removing head everything will be moved so it's pointless so I'm gonna try to do something here and we'll see what happens it's getting dark so what I've done I've removed these bolts and the torques ones that go in there and uh, so now this is the tensioner i can technically slide this out so let me do that can film while doing this okay guys it's stupid but all i could do today is remove the exhaust it's getting dark and this front gears the secondary chain and that one is left here because because uh, it's just too dark in here. I can't do anything. Looks like uh, the tensioner was bad. We'll see. We'll continue tomorrow uh, if it's not raining, but probably will.
and of course some tea so now I'm gonna put uh, gloves on my left hand you see the thing is my phone which I used to film does not work with gloves on so I have to use with bare I have to use bare hands okay so about the removal of these uh, camshafts what I found online what many say there are many ways of doing it obviously again I say there is a tool for this but uh, the, the basic fear is that because it's so brittle it can crack or just snap uh, when you untighten this and these are extremely tight so what uh, I was recommended is to so you see you got a cylinder one cylinder two cylinder three cylinder and you can see this rockers the facing up so those that are facing up they do not obviously apply any pressure to the spring load under right therefore those that face down apply the most pressure and you can figure if you turn the, uh, the crank I mean the cam crank cam uh, the way that the points actually face down on uh, even sides for example uh, this is first cylinder for example this one second facing down and fourth which is six five fourth here we go therefore you are likely to distribute the load so that you can actually start from the back and front and then work the middle section so that it doesn't crack and that's what I'm gonna do all right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to go very slowly break the so first I break the torque and then I kind of like screw them back I wish I had a lower speed on this thing it's too much power it's like 500 feet pounds of torque so I can't do this and film I'm just gonna have to remove it off camera so now this is a good demonstration of what I was talking about so now the whole uh, cam is held by uh, this point and this point and at both of these points as you, see, you can see the rockers are pointed down so the distribution of pressure is even among the center the way I hold my hand so this way it won't crack so what I'm gonna do next this this last two I'm gonna untighten very gently side like cross pattern until it all pops out also I am placing the parts in the exact order as it is on the engine because apparently anything in the head over here is uh, sensitive to its original location due to wear and tear that happened over the years and this car is old so we want to make sure we keep everything exactly as it was before okay so this cam can come out now officially so it's officially available uh, but I think I forgot to remove these guys but I'll do this now so this is beautiful I bought magnets that I will place here to keep the uh, the valves not from from uh, falling in so on this side we see these rockers are down these are up so these are up because they don't touch the actual wall these are up and these are down so this one is held by the five and by the first therefore everything except five and uh, I have a cat issue over there no, I don't want to have this issue so everything except one and five can be removed at this point because nothing is held held in this together so the last one I already removed and I'm placing it this way so the right is the right left is the left all right so I bought magnets and uh, what I'm doing 
Ah, shit is gonna fall down. Like I say, I film and I work. I would have done this a lot quicker, but for you, I do this. So I place the magnets on the valves, right? And uh, this way, when I lift the assembly up, nothing falls down, hopefully. And we'll see. This is like four dollars worth of magnets. I'm putting two. I have like they're smaller, so I put it. I put two so that they're, that they're stronger. Hopefully, they will hold it up when I lift it. Because I, apparently, as I say, you cannot mix stuff up here. Everything has to go where it always sat. And why? Because, for example, you see, there are microscopic scratchers, scratches here, here and there. Uh, all of that not on this side. Let me see if there's the worst one. They're all pretty good actually They're Very very good. So this one is the worst one uh, So anything that scratches this and has been scratching it um, Is um, An example of why this one should go exactly where it was before Otherwise, I'm gonna have extra wear that I don't want so so now as the magnets are here and it's two on each of them two 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 it's all even right what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a cam over right like this and now as you can see from the bottom it all is magnet got stuck into this so I put a cam over this and as you can see everything just got sucked to it um, basically this way we won't lose any of them and let's try to lift and I can only can already see that I can with both hands so I'll have to turn off the camera and this is amazing I have pulled all of them out with none falling none not a single one and uh, this as a whole piece now can be stored and cleaned all together with nothing mismatched okay I'm gonna do the same thing with this side except I did not put magnets on this one because I ran out the other ones are held uh, by other uh, cam so and I think I lost two the box is empty now whatever even if they fall out I know which one is which one and uh, to make it even better I can do something like that in that way and the last one so the very last one no I don't want the last one actually I can the very last one and the very first one there is no way even if they fall out I will confuse them so exactly like I said only the first one fell out even though the engine was tilted the first one and the very last one <coughs> if I did not have magnets all of them would have fallen out and what I'm talking about is this piece focus bitch and this it has some wear against the valves themselves these are the valves themselves and the valve springs and we are going to service of course everything um, and uh, wash making sure everything is exactly like brand new okay this was removed and now it's time to remove the head there's nothing holding except this tensioner and uh, that's about it. Alright, this is actually interesting. So the exhaust part has A on it and uh, intake has E. They are number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and they're facing towards me. So in case, I'm, in case I mess them up it's actually you don't need to keep them together it's quite easy 
you can't really mix it up so now I'm gonna be removing the head and uh, these are E12 okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to be going cross pattern so that there is no warp possible and I'm gonna actually I'm not gonna use impact gun I'm gonna use hands with a very small wrench uh, this way I feel also the torque itself uh, what it was torqued to so I'm gonna start from that end then go here then middle sort of like that this is E8 so the shorter one goes in the front the longer one on the back uh, this is probably is it snapped holy shit look at that that's why the engine stopped rotating the fucking tensioner snapped wow so we just arrived to the failure of this engine why it failed it's because of that wow oh my god i didn't know what happened i thought this were the actual bearings that failed but no look at this isn't it crazy now i see what happened now i actually see what happened wow interesting quite interesting uh -huh. so okay right, that guy has 500 foot pounds of impact and it does nothing nothing so i'll have to go with a heavy art ulteriorly <laughs> this is going to take care of this finally look at this it's pretty large plus it has some some torque settings here if i want to so now i'm talking so I'll just So there are two of them. The longer one goes right side intake, the shorter one goes deeper in exhaust. Alright, let's lift this up. Uh, something else is holding it now. I know what's holding it. Is a fucking exhaust I was telling you about. Shit. Look at this garbage. Well, obviously coolant leaked in. But <laughs> look at the carbon. Oh my fucking god. I swear this is like a this is why this engine needs to be rebuilt look at this carbon oh my god look at the last cylinder just look at this is this is this even normal oh my god this is like an not even inches <laughs> this is like uh, a lot <laughs> absolutely ridiculous these gaskets are just no good coming off anyways Hairs coming off everything comes off all right here we done i'm gonna just wash everything that is sitting on a railroad tie for now i'm gonna wash it here and then i'm gonna disassemble everything i'm gonna wash the everything i can I'm not gonna watch that, that is just epic, I wanna look at it. The more I look at this, look at that, the more it actually motivates me to do something. Look at this, this is just crazy. Oh my god. And the reason the engine fell because of the actual tensioner. 
that was that that's what was banging right before it failed uh, the day before I heard this that's the kind of noise I heard on high rpm and then the engine seized and stopped rotating now it's not even rotating rotating I think something is bent or terribly wrong so we're gonna disassemble everything and see what's what's the matter and now I can actually remove the engine easier because of those bolts are here and the side bolts are there everything accessible very easy and also it weighs less so technically I don't even need an engine lift well it's the first step because you're not taking this homework to the garage or anywhere you gotta make sure it's at least somewhat basically uh, removed from all the gunk It feels satisfying doing this. This is what I was missing the whole day, is this. But again, I wouldn't set the head down like this on a concrete, obviously. So it's on a railroad tie, on, on wooden surface. Uh, therefore, there is nothing scratching aluminum. Okay, you might call me crazy, but I don't have a girlfriend. These are ripped shirts, old, not needed shirts, and this is my bathtub, one of them. So, you get the idea what I'm going to do here? Yes, you're right, I'm going to wash the head in here and soak it too, because this is the plug, and, and as we speak, I'm going to take shower somewhere else, because I have obviously more than one what I'm gonna do I'm gonna lay these shirts over the bathtub and uh, what I'm doing this because I don't want it scratched obviously right so I have plenty of more I have so many that it's enough to cover the entire bathtub with it and I have also plastic that I can use which I will also put down so no matter what and how I bang the thing here and not a piece of uh, email will be uh, dinged if I had a wife here she would kill me for this if she finds this in the bus tub but this is my wife BMW be my wife exactly we're gonna clean it here and we're not gonna rush on this this is gonna happen over weekend it's gonna remain here and uh, I'm just gonna take shower in the shower area not in the tub area so that's it okay so the actual lifters are here in the assembly all in order I sprayed them with oven cleaner and that is uh, the remaining amount of the bolts and stuff I'm so tired besides this I have to wash the floor after myself wash everything like I said uh, quality versus speed is my attempt here to make everything right uh, this is the last video for today let's see what happens uh, tomorrow um, like I said, I'm just gonna do it steady and I have a goal to make, so let's see. I boiled some water and that's what I'm gonna use. It's satisfying as hell to do this. Really awesome. Look at this.
All right, guys, so I'm servicing these. Uh, the problem is they get clogged with a lot of uh, grease. And I find that all of the issues in my engine, uh, as far as I saw now at this point from disassembly, are related to cloggage of carbon and uh, of this kind of dark uh, residue from uh, burnt oil and uh, whatever combustion product there will be after so what the thing is these they supposed to spring like this like this one actually springs uh, this side I already redone as you can see uh, I can press let me see it. let me make a bed see now this springs and now I'll show you which one doesn't and now these they're hard as a rock they are hard as a rock so I need to take them out all and basically use pliers grab like this and hold the other side and pull the center piece out once uh, the center piece is removed you can see this part right so you basically separate the internal and you see I can't even do it with one hand I need to do two hands so what there is there is a like a spring uh, like a piston right and the uh, housing parts which is completely clogged by something very dark that acts like a sort of glue after all see so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna drop them here all these parts right and then I'm gonna take wires up and take all of that into a locker thinner and I'm gonna close the lid and basically have it washed and I'm doing one by one I already done entire that side exception of one which we do right now and I have this part so this one I'm gonna do this one next so I don't know which one that is exhaust or intake at this point uh, there, there are letters here it says so that's the exhaust this is no this is the exhaust this is the intake um, so as you can see I'm pressing and there is no movement and that what causes this tickle sound valve tickle sound um, this one as you can see perfect so now watch this what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take that part out completely draining extras there right. I'm gonna dump all of this down and you can see more of the dark shit came out so it basically dissolved the gunk once gunk is dissolved, uh, actually you don't have to make it perfectly clean. Fresh oil will dissolve the rest. Uh, you put the spring in there, like that. See, make sure it's straight, like this. Right now it's straight. So now this part, the piston, what I call it, goes uh, this part in. Right, and now you can see a functioning piece. So now it works, right? Um, what I'm gonna do next? I'm gonna wipe. 
inside there. I'm gonna drain the extras here. Yeah, it's a very tedious job. I mean, it's dirty, it's boring. Uh, so I have something to watch while I do this. It's not like I'm sitting here and doing this. I'm basically watching TV and content and feel, like filming this right now and uh, having fun because it's boring. So, you see this part came out. So we insert it. See, they are so sealed that uh, if you insert it under like not a perfect angle like this, it's not gonna go in. So you wanna make sure you straighten it before you, you see it doesn't go in. So you need to reinsert it. Like I'm gonna do now. So reinsert it and uh, facing down that way, you insert. So I'm gonna need two hands because if I let it go, this part will uh, fall out. And when you when you squeeze the the part in, it squirts all the gunk out of this hole. There is a hole, you see. So what I'm gonna do the last time. I'm gonna do one more submersion like this and drain the extras. And before I put it away and dry it, I'm gonna squirt it. Yeah, here we go, I squirt it. See how much it's coming out? Look at this, keeps coming. Oh my god, so much. Look at this, it's just coming, oh my god. So wow so imagine how much there is it's just a lot so you gotta keep doing it until it's over so now i'm on the intake part and intake side is much cleaner as always uh, you know it's interesting all of the parts so far i've been touching that have to do with intake versus exhaust the intake is always 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 cleaner the exhaust part is is everything charred so it comes to valves it comes to everything and valves i'm gonna do another video on valves uh you saw probably how i cleaned them and uh that is the reason why engines fail is exactly that so um, the reason I'm spending so so much time on the head of the engine is because the head is responsible for overall probably 90% of your engine health is the head so once your valves start leaking or uh, these bang on the valves and uh, carbon gets cooked on the parts everything works basically with oil in the combustion chamber and that's what we don't want we don't want any oil in the combustion chamber we want to make sure there is no oil getting in there so once you start burning oil is the sign not because of the piston rings but a lot because of the head parts as such as these or valves contact or valve guides or valve seals it could you name it everything so the head is very important it's where everything starts and I want to make sure the head itself is particularly uh, perfect okay and everything after comes so that's kind of like don't forget about the head you think oh there is no pistons there is no uh, bearings there is no nothing that people usually talk about but it's actually number one to pay attention to when you rebuild your engine